Here's the plan. Make a film during a 100K race all by myself. Other than my wife who's here, she's gonna maybe provide me with a couple of photos from her camera. I'm gonna start that again. My main goal is to complete this race, period. I have to avoid getting distracted by anything, including the camera, follow my plan, try not to get hurt. Last night I went through all my gear and thought, I can't take that much gear. I had two bags that I was gonna pack. One was a running backpack and one was like a big fanny pack because I have to carry all this stuff. So I've pared it down to just the one backpack, everything in it that I can fit. <laughs> I'm just getting ready to run 100 kilometers and I don't know what's going on. The Fat Dog 100K race begins at the western edge of Manning Provincial Park in southern British Columbia. The route includes multiple aid stations supported by dozens of volunteers. The total elevation gain during this race is approximately 14,000 feet, or around 4,400 meters. Seven, six, I feel like I got too five. much gear on. Have a great day! <laughs> you know, in the early stages, there's always that front group, like up there, and there's sort of a back group. They're usually the ones that pick up speed. Many, many kilometers still to go. Grab a gummy worm and a cookie, a cup of flat Coca-Cola, get some extra caffeine. It looks like we're gonna climb. This is where you really gotta stay focused mentally and not get ahead of yourself. Stop paying attention to nutrition, water, things you can trip over. When's our next aid station, do you know? Uh, it's about 16 kilometers away and a thousand meters up. Oh, oh gummies. 16K to the next aid station, so this section here is where I'm gonna have to fuel up with what I brought. So I've got a couple of bars and the real trick is not to get your stomach all messed up. It's like 10.30 and I'm just feeling a little tired. You listen to your body, you pace yourself. You don't want to run, you don't run, you just build up some more energy. Conserve some energy, I guess. I tell you, this hill climb has not let up for, I don't know, an hour and a half. I just saw these two people go by, probably mid-60s, maybe older, powering up this hill. Like, this hill has been going on forever. They're just, like, spry. Pretty awesome. Okay, so what's your name? Maddie. Maddie. Are you okay to walk for a sec? I am. So, Maddie, we've been uh, crossing paths here. We're just about at the Hope Pass aid station, I think it is. Yep. My stomach is just not happy, and it's making things exponentially harder. I was going for I like a goal time. Now, I'm just gonna cross the finish line. Yay! <laughs> People ask why anyone would sign up for an ultra marathon, and there are many reasons, of course. For me, it's the challenge, but it's also a good reason to stay fit, something I might not otherwise do. I don't consider myself a hardcore athlete. I'm 54, I've got three young children, two grown children, and a full-time job. So finding time to train is always a balancing act. Fortunately, my family encourages and inspires me, and my wife Erin Trainer helps keep me on track. Hi, All right, so I've just come from down there. We did an out and back. Originally, it came from over there. You know, a lot of it, I'm feeling like I need to walk on the flats just because I just feel exhausted. This is where this event and big runs like this become a bit of a mental game. It's like, you have a lot of running left to do and it feels difficult already. So it really is just one foot in front of the other at this point and get some wins where you can. Running on the flats is a win for me and uh, hope the nutrition is working. So far, so good. Downhill. Hard on the quads a little bit, but a little better than going uphill. For sure. During an ultra marathon, doubt sometimes creeps in. I'm starting to question whether I can finish this race before the 26 hour cutoff. 
Okay, so right now it's about 10 to 6. So according to the GPS, Eric is at the fourth brother, the furthest to the left. So I'm going to go and wait for him at the Blackwall aid station. At the Blackwall Peak Aid Station, for the first time in this race, doubt is creeping in. Thanks. It was late at night and I knew that Eric would be tired when he came up to the van. And he laid down. I didn't think he was going to get back up. And he questioned whether he would get back up. But I said to him, what happens if you don't try? How will you feel tomorrow morning? So after about 45 minutes in the van, he got up and he's like, I'm going to do it. Opened the door and ran eight kilometers down Blackwall Peak to the next aid station. At Windy Joe's aid station, I can hear cheering at the finish line nearby, which is weird because I still have to run pretty much a half marathon while navigating and climbing in the dark. Okay. Climbing up Skyline at 3.30 in the morning. Last little bit of this... 100k. Brutal. Hey Eric, it's Maddie here. I am so glad that you reached out. I was having a real rough go that first 30k into Hope Aid Station and wasn't sure if I wanted to keep going, but just chatting and talking and sharing these experiences with another fellow racer was kind of exactly what I needed and put things back into perspective. I don't think I would have had the race I ended up having and my crew and, and you in part, you know, got me through. And so thank you. I appreciate it. Happy trails. As the sun comes up, I've set a new goal. I want to finish this race in under 24 hours. And this has motivated me to pick up the pace. At the bottom of this climb, I know that once I hit Rainbow Bridge, I've got about a kilometer left. Time is running out though, so I need to push hard to the finish line at Lightning Lake. You did well. I was trying to get every 24 hours. I got five minutes. Yeah, you got five minutes. <laughs> I learned a lot from this experience. I had no idea that my interaction with runners could in any way impact or help them. Everybody plays a role. None of this is a solo effort. From Aaron helping me at the aid station to all the volunteers who get involved and do all this work, filmmaking is collaborative. Running is collaborative. This has been an amazing experience. Perfect.